Okay, Tuesday, 23rd of April, 2024. So, St. George's Day and the changing or changes of England. So, one thing I've noticed, a few things I've interestingly noticed over the past 15 odd years, 14, 15 odd years, uh, the different patron saint days are given different respect and level of reverence. You know, St. Patrick's Day, very well respected and remembered. Especially here in Ireland, fair enough. And uh, and St. David's Day, and St. Andrew's Day, Wales and Scotland. But St. George's Day, even in like 2008 and nine, I remember, wasn't really remembered very much. Like, okay, fine, just a cultural, just a thing. Okay, interesting little tidbit I've noticed. Because what I also noticed, interestingly, is that I think at one point, possibly in the 19, early 1980s, I'd, I'd say around that time, England, or UK, but definitely England, seems to have sacrificed, so to speak, culture and identity hmm, for wealth. Where social cohesion, social cohesion, or trust society, low or high trust society, started to suffer, quite possibly. Maybe, I don't know the details, but subtly noticed that. But in, in its stead, it got wealth, it got rich, it got... High, strong middle class, you could say. A strong international currency, that's very important, that's quite powerful. Good exchange rate. And then that led to me realising and subtly noticing that the UK is actually a good export country, a good country to sell to. Selling pounds, so earning in strong currency, set and sent, earning in strong currency, spending in a weak currency, which is something I've talked about on this channel before in terms of being international. Earning in a stronger currency than your own, pound, dollar, euro, those are good, good examples, and spending in a local weaker currency. And the other example I mentioned in the past was like Argentine, um, Mexican peso, whatever else. But interestingly, so it sacrificed culture for wealth. Okay, interesting. Now, when I was in the island man a few days ago, and what I noticed in the past when I was in Ireland before, is that those places, here and there, Isle of Man, is what England, or the UK, certainly England, used to be like, or was like. Culture, attitudes, priorities. Because what I've noticed here in England, uh, in, in Ireland, what I've noticed here, is that um, there's a strong, cohesive culture, quite consistent, consistent across the island. Okay, duly noted, very interesting. And that identity, maybe that high trust society, is not as present in England. Maybe in Wales, possibly. I suspect so in Scotland. I possibly am not so sure. England, less so. Maybe just I've spent more time in England than all the rest than I have in here. In Ireland, it's possible, by all means. But interesting nonetheless. But definitely, it seems, sacrifice culture and identity for wealth. Now, if that's a good trade-off or not, only time will tell in the future, you know, 10, 20... Future historians, historians who are not even born today, They'll, they'll be able to better judge the actions of the past and today in hindsight. But that's one thing I've subtly noticed. And that brings on to St. George's Day. So this degradation of the culture and this identity is lost. Okay. So these things like St. George's Day is not necessarily remembered. Okay. Or respected or you, you, you pick any word. But it isn't, it isn't as celebrated as, say, St. Patrick's Day for reasons... We can extrapolate, you know, we can, uh, we can guess, a culture, whatever else. But okay, fine, interesting. Okay, now, in this international world we live in, this, in this contemporary society we live in, that's good and bad, some would argue. It's good, we have a strong currency, means you can be international, means tourism. If you're earning in pounds, going abroad, it's good for you. You're more... You, you know, your money goes long, goes further up, you know, goes further. You can buy more stuff with it. That's powerful. But at the same time, your culture, your identity is lost. Or at risk, some would say. Lost, risk, whatever. Now, there's an interesting concept in psychology called third culture kid. Third culture kid. And that means that someone who was born, say, born physically in, say, Germany but say to French parents, but living in say England, for example, they would consider themselves a third culture kid, meaning they, they don't quite know which culture 
to associate with. Are they, are they French, German, English? Uh, they don't really know. They don't know. It's mix and muddled. Third culture kid. Now, I say to that then is you are individual. You are your own person. You are your own. You are your own person. You are your own culture. You are the person who you decide to be. Fair enough. You are what you want to be in life. Okay. Now that idea itself, that very individualistic idea or ambition, kind of flies in the face of culture, a collective culture, higher trust society, low trust society. It just just, just seems to be that way. But that idea of being individual, being an individual, and being international is powerful. So it seems that in this, in this contemporary society we live in, there are ways to be very international, earning in strong currency, spending in weaker currency, moving abroad, and not being tied. Ooh, okay, not being tied down, or not being associated to one specific culture, if you don't want it. If you don't want to be, say for example, English culture. Hmm. Okay, but then it begs the question, like the third culture kid, is where do you belong? Because what I noticed when I went to Mexico in 2020, for the first time, was that it was very homogenous, very, very homogenous. I was quite surprised that there weren't English or British and American tourists basically everywhere. I was quite surprised about that, outside the tourist zone. Just, okay, interesting tidbit. So then I realised that actually then a lot of the world is very homogenous. It's just the Western cultures cultures and countries tend to be more of a melting pot, more multicultural. You see, that seems to be the historical, if we look at the grand scheme of history, the, uh, the exception. Okay, fair enough. So, what does that mean then? Is that if you are able to be more individualistic and from these Western countries, earning in pounds and being international, that's the key word there, international, then the world truly is your oyster. Then you can pick and choose which culture you want to associate with. Which group of people, like the third culture kid, which society, which culture do you want to associate with? This place, that place, this culture here, there. Pick and choose. By all means. Okay, fair enough. Very individualistic. You're an adult, make your own decision. But that's interesting. Because it means that one culture, one country would suffer, culturally speaking, but in its place become richer in terms of the finance, in terms of the exchange rate, just looking at face value. And that opens up opportunities for those people. If the culture is being lost, what do you do? And that's a very sincere question. What do you do? By all means, you'd fight for the culture, re reinvigorate the culture, remember it, respect it, commemorate, commemorate it, you know, St. Saint, Saint George's Day, 23rd of April, by all means. Or do you go international? And do you take whatever whatever you have of the culture or your behaviour, attitudes and priorities and go abroad and do your own thing. Well, again, individualistic. In this contemporary society we live in, do what you want. You're an adult. Okay, fair enough. But the key, the key thing there is you're an adult. Make it your own mind. But that's an interesting observation nonetheless. The way culture, certain cultures have gone, they're dying out or being not suppressed or, or not, not respected as much. And in its place is... Wealth, materialism on one extreme, and materialism is replacing it. Whether that's good, bad, ugly, a different question, different debate. But that's in this contemporary society we live in. Again, this is for future historians to debate about. But it seems to be that with the loss of culture and the gain, gaining of wealth, material things, especially the exchange rate, it opens up new doors that in the past we, have, we as a human civilization have not had the ability to be truly international. And I don't just mean just international, say, from 500 years ago, you know, like Marco Polo, who was able just to travel around the world, or, you know, travel one place and back, but I mean, like, be in all kinds of places in the world, learn the languages and be in these different locations. And within reason, within 24 hours, you can be anywhere in the world on a single flight. It's quite powerful. So then it seems that in one regard, society or culture would suffer by not being embraced let's say but another way is a chance to flourish you can be more international and it's societies tipping more towards certain cultures and societies tipping more towards being individualistic now that's interesting in terms of evolution because what happens then is what's what's called is collapse of darwinian selection meaning there's too much of a free-for-all in society too much individualism 
leads to collapse in Darwinian selection. So there's too much um, of a, of a free-for-all in society and there's no group orientation, the opposite extreme where everyone is coming together for the culture, for the identity, for the commonality. That's, that's, there's two different ways of looking at it. And again, this is for future historians to, to decide and, and think about and ponder and debate. At which point, when, when was the critical mass reached where people were too individualistic and it was too much of a free-for-all? Because in some places, I've noticed, like in Ireland, there's a strong, consistent culture. Like, look at the signs. They're in English and in uh, the local language as well. And that's powerful. But that's an interesting observation. Morning. And, uh, so yes. So, the chance then, the chance, opportunity is, how international do you want to be? How international, individualistic do you want to be? Or group orientated, remembering and embracing the culture. And, and in life, there's nuances. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just, you have to justify it to yourself. You have to justify it in here logically, and in here, your heart and in your soul, because you have to live with the decision. Fair enough. Again, you're an adult, make up your own mind. But that's an interesting observation I had, I made. The UK, certainly England, started to lose its culture, but gain wealth. And what does that mean? It means you can be more individualistic. You can pick and choose what kind of culture or what kind of behaviours to have or priorities to have. You can be more international. What does that mean? You can more chances to do what you want. And that's important because fundamentally, as, as a core principle in life, we want to live up to our potential and do amazing things in life. That's important. And I think that I think that's that's important for every single person. Like it's imperative to do to do best as you can with your skills in life. That's powerful. Yeah. Explore, travel, you know the rest. So yes. So that's an interesting little observation I had that I've been thinking about. There's a few other things as well to discuss and talk about, but they're a little off topic for other, other vlogs in the future. But uh, I want to mention that, especially today, as it's St. George's Day, just interesting little coincidence, nice little observation. But yeah, otherwise, I'm in uh, South West Island. There's this little churchyard here in a nice, unique town called Night Town. Pretty cool. Yeah, in this nice little garden here as well as you've clearly seen. But yeah, but otherwise, you will see me tomorrow.